Hi, welcome to this edition of Digital Discoveries. Now, today we're going to be looking at something that affects our TLI grant teachers in our secondary schools. That would be our middle and high schools. And that is how to get things off of an iPad and up so that the teacher can grade them. And so we're going to be talking about something that probably not a lot of people know about called WebDAV. And so today we're going to be talking, it's kind of technical, but I hope that once we walk through it, you'll, you'll be able to understand. It's called WebDAV to save student work. So let's talk a little bit about the iPads that either you have in your classroom or you're going to be getting soon as part of your TLI grant. The iPad is a great device. It's, it's one of the one of the most interesting and, and disruptive devices that has ever come down in, in education technology. Millions and millions of them are out there in schools. We've certainly uh, uh, adopted them wholeheartedly in EPISD. The TLI grant is kind of the technology component of the TLI grant. Just wraps itself around iPads. But they have some limitations because the iPad itself is not exactly like a laptop. And in the old days, laptops, you know, we'd save to either a disk or we'd save it to a, a USB drive or we'd save our files somewhere. And these new devices, these mobile devices, they don't have a whole lot of room to put things like floppy drives in. They don't have a whole lot of room to slide a, a CD player in. That's what makes them so thin. And so you have to save files somewhere else. You can either save the files on the device, which isn't optimal, especially the way we're using them in our district, where we're like sharing the devices with other students. Or you can put these things up on the cloud in the web somewhere. And so that's, what, that's where this, uh, this little thing comes in. So iPads, they're great devices for learning and extending learning and for instructional technology, but they really have some limitations on sharing, especially if you're using the devices to, to, uh, with multiple students during the day. So there's different ways to share on iPads. Now, this isn't the only way, but when we're talking about the um, uh, programs that we're using for students to actually write essays and things like that, like Pages or Keynote, there's very limited ways to share. The students can either email uh, a document to the teacher. They can post it on a website like YouTube, but it has to be a video if you're posting it up on YouTube. They can send it to iTunes, but it has to be the iTunes account for the, on the device itself, which is okay, but again, because we're using lots of students here in a classroom, it's not the optimal way. Um, another choice is opening it in another app. So that kind of works, but you have to have the other app that, uh, that'll allow that. The last one is WebDAV. WebDAV is the way that we're going to talk about today, where we're going to be able to share what we've done, post it up online. None of those are easy. None of those are easy. So what we have to do is we have to pick the easiest way out of all those five or six choices. What's, what's the easiest way to do it? So uh, in technology services, we sat down and we looked at each single, every single one of these, and we decided that WebDAV was probably the best way for our students to share from their iPads using pages or numbers or Keynote up for their teachers to grade assignments. So what is WebDAV? Well, WebDAV is kind of the way to look at it, it's kind of like a, a filing cabinet. It's a place on the internet where uh, the teachers have a, have a uh, a cabinet where students can load all their files into that cabinet and then the teacher can go in, open that cabinet, pull them out and, um, and uh, read the, and grade the assignments. So each teacher has their specific drawer in that filing cabinet. Uh, each campus has a whole set of filing cabinets and, um, and what we did was we decided that since teachers are kind of a fluid group, you know, the the teacher, Mrs. Smith, that's going to be at Irvin this year, may be Mrs. Smith at Burgess the next year. And Mr. Jones at Coronado this year might be Mr. Jones at Franklin the following year. So we decided instead of assigning uh, these filing cabinet drawers to a particular teacher, what we would do is 
we'd come up with kind of generic names. So we're going to talk about Irvin High School here for this. Uh, we're going to use Irvin as our example. But uh, this works for any of the web DAV servers uh, that are in that, uh, any of the teachers that are in our TLI grant, any of the schools. So Irvin 1, Irvin 2, Irvin 3, those are the titles of these drawers that are in our filing cabinet that's up there in the web DAV server. And so what a campus has to do is the campus has to decide which teacher goes with which drawer. So for instance, Mrs. Smith, she's the English teacher at Irvin. She's the first English teacher at Irvin, so she's going to get Irvin number one. Mr. Jones, he's the second English teacher at Irvin. He's going to get Irvin number two, and so on and so forth. And so you go through all the drawers and assign them to each teacher. At the end of the year, we'll pull all those drawers back, reassign them at the, at the next year. That's going to be up to the campus to decide what teacher goes with which drawer. So what we did was we made sure that there were just generic names because teachers are kind of a fluid group and they move from campus to campus. And so there's an Irvin folder, Irvin 1, Irvin 2, Irvin 3, Austin 1, Austin 2, Austin 3. Those campuses are, are put in that way. Then what has to happen is that at the campus, the teacher is assigned to the folder. So for instance, Mrs. Smith, she's the first English teacher. She's assigned Irvin 1. It'll all make sense in a second. Mr. Jones, he's the second Irvin English language arts teacher. He's assigned Irvin 2, and so on and so forth. Mr. Lopez, he's, Irvin, he's the third English language arts teacher at Irvin. He's assigned folder 3. Those will never change throughout the course of the year. If, if Mr. Lopez accidentally logs into Irvin folder 1, he's going to get Mrs. Smith's account, and so on and so forth. So you've got to make sure that Mr. Lopez remembers that he's number three. Mrs. Smith remembers that she's Irvin Folder number one. OK, so let's see how this works. We're going to like uh, show real quick. The student will create some kind of content, either in numbers or pages or Keynote. Again, pages is the word processing file. Keynote is the presentation file uh, program, kind of like uh, uh, PowerPoint. Numbers is a spreadsheet. So probably your students will be working with pages in Keynote more than they'll be working with a spreadsheet, especially for our TLI grant, grantees. Um, just real quick, uh, just to show you how that works. Um, this is pages. Uh, to make a document, you turn it on. You just say, my documents. You hit that plus button in the upper left-hand corner. You say, I want to create the document. Gives you a choice. There's lots of templates already built in to the program. You can see there's lots of templates already there. But uh, maybe the student just wants to do something very simple. So he types in a blank. And then he starts typing. Typing, typing, typing. OK, so there's, there's his document. Now the student's ready to save that document. What do they have to do? Well, they have to go to the wrench in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Um, you can probably see that there. I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see there's a wrench. Now the students have to know what teacher is which and where the teacher's folder is so they can load their files. So it's not like a secret password because the students are going to be able to get the passwords. The students have to have the passwords and the account in order to load these things up for the teachers. So there's the, there's the wrench and if you, if you if you click on the wrench, or students will click on the wrench, they're given those choices, share and print, find, document, set up, setting. We're interested in sharing and printing. You'll notice that there's those ways of sharing that we talked about earlier, emailing, printing, opening another app, copy it to iTunes, or copy it to WebDAV. What we're interested in is copying it to WebDAV. So what I want to do now is show you a little video that we've created on how to copy from from here up to WebDAV. So hang on just a sec. Here comes the video. Um, let's say we go into documents here. We want our students to start a new document. They create a document. Whatever the document is, here they're going to create this proposal, a project proposal, uh, whatever that is. Okay, they worked on it all period. And now they're ready to upload it to the teacher's uh, server. So this is the way to do it. You click on that. Um, you click on the little tool, that little wrench in the upper right hand corner. Then click on Share and Print. Now, there's lots of different ways to do this, but we talked about some of these are not optimal. What we want to do is go to Copy to WebDAV. So we go to the server address, which is https colon slash slash webdav1 dot ep 
isd.org. Okay, so that's the, and then don't forget again, after that, you put in webdav again. So it's the whole address is https colon slash slash webdav1.episd.org slash webdav. Then the username in this case, we're going to use one of our accounts uh, that's out there. And we're going to type in the password, which is random. Uh, whoops. We're going to sign in. We're going to continue there. And then what happens is you'll get this screen pop up. And it says, do you want to save it as a pages file, a PDF file, or a Word file? It's up to you. Uh, you know, if you're just grading it, PDF file works fine. So we just click on PDF. And uh, we just click on copy, and there it goes up to that WebDAV server, and then you're done. And so now you think that that's all you got to do, but the student has to do one last thing here, and he has to log out of that. And so if we go back to that WebDAV server, pull that screen back up and click sign out. And here's the reason why you want to sign out is because if the student doesn't sign out, then the next person that comes in can't sign in and upload their stuff. So that's, uh, that's why that happens. So, or what will happen is the next student will wipe out the previous student's work. So that's how, that's how that works. Also have the students, when they're naming their files, give them names that have the student name in it instead of just uh, document one, document two, because if everybody uses that convention, one will rewrite the other one. So. That's how, uh, that's how you use the web server to upload from an iPad. Something that's very important that I think uh, we, probably, uh, we probably do in our analog world, but we don't necessarily do in our digital world, is that we have to have some kind of naming convention for our students' files. And that's not so much for the students, but that's for our teachers, so that when a teacher looks at a file, they'll be able to tell exactly who made that file when it was made so on and so forth. Now we do that with regular pieces of paper. We can just look at the, the students sign the paper. Jose Lopez, first period, you know, 10-23-2012, you know, that's all up there in the upper right hand corner. It's harder to do just by looking at the name of file. So we strongly suggest that when students are uploading files to the WebDAV server that there's some kind of naming convention in your classroom so that you will be able to look at the file name and understand where that file is. So for instance, Jose Lopez 1110212. So what there we have is the name first, student's name first, Jose Lopez. Then we have the date of the assignment. So this date uh, took place on the 11th day of November, uh, excuse me, <laughs> November 2nd, 2012, 110212. And then essay. So you have the name, the date, the assignment. And the students should do this every single time. And it should be in that order. So maybe you have like something up on the board that shows name, date, assignment in their, in their file uh, name. So that you, as the teacher, can understand when you're looking at that. You can also look at that and see how old it is by just looking at the, the title in there. So how do you get to your files? How does the teacher get to their files again? If they go to this web address, where you say webdav1.episd.org slash webdav and then the other slash which is the name of the account. So it's Irvin 23 or Irvin 2 or Irvin 1 or Coronado 1 or whatever that is. That's the, the last, after that last webdav, the slash, that's the name of the account. That's where all the students' files are going to be. So that's how you access files on the internet. Um, so the question is, how do you do it the other way? How do, say a student saves a file, but they're not finished with the work. How do they get that file back? And that's essentially just going in reverse. So let's look real quick how you would do that in, I, in pages. So we go back to where we were at. Let me pull that uh, thing back up real quick. Uh, there we go. Ah. And you'll notice that if uh, if a student wanted to oops, excuse me if a student wanted to get to a document if they wanted to go back to their document they'd go up to the upper right hand corner again it's the opposite everything is like you do you're working in reverse here so you do the opposite of where you're at so you go back to the upper right hand corner and 
create a document, that's starting from scratch. But what we want to do is copy from WebDAV. So that is, you click on that, and then that will ask you, where's that server coming from? And so this is just kind of, you're working in reverse. You enter the server name again, the username, and the password. And so what will happen is when the student enters that, it'll get a, he'll get, he or she will get a list of all the files that are in that server and again. That's why that naming convention is important so the student can actually find their file to work on very quickly as well. You don't want to spend all day looking at three, four, you know, 50, 60 files. You just want to be able to, oh, Jose Lopez, November 2nd, 2012, essay. I can click on that, pops right back up. So essentially, to get the file back onto the device, you're just working in reverse of, of saving it. And again, it's one of those things. The student has to log out once they're done. They have to log out because otherwise it, it uh, stops it for all the other people that are trying to use it. So that is WebDAV. That's, uh, that's, how, uh, that's how we uh, get our students to save their work. That's how we get their students to retrieve our work. Again, this is for the three programs that were, that were uh, in the student TLI grants at the secondary campus. Pages, numbers, and keynote. This is how they'll save their, their work and retrieve their work. It's not the most elegant solution, it's not the easiest solution, but for our purposes, that's the way it's gonna work. Now, students have to be in the EPISD network in order to be able to retrieve that work, and so uh, that's, a, that's an important thing as well. So um, since students aren't taking these devices home with them, uh, we figured that that's probably not so much a problem. So that's WebDAV. That's how to save and retrieve files from a WebDAV server. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Digital Discoveries.